this Samsung Galaxy Flip 5 is absolutely destroyed, and today we're gonna recover the data off of it for my customer. See, what happened is the customer sent this phone in because although they're able to, you know, at least open the phone and, you know, turn it on and there's a display back there, there's no touch input. So they can't use anything like a smart switch to go ahead and move over to their brand new Flip 6. And because they don't really want to replace the screen necessarily, they were wondering if I could go any other way about it. And after doing some research, I found the perfect option. We're gonna use an external display as well as a USB drive. You go ahead and use an external device to actually offload all the data off of here. So then they can load it onto their new phone. And let me show you how we're gonna do that. First up, we're gonna need a couple things to do. We're gonna need a mouse or any kind of wireless mouse that can connect over USB, a USB-C hub, that's the nice thing about this phone is that it, because it has USB-C, we can do multiple outputs. So we can uh, convert that single input um, to go ahead and move over to, you know, we have a power delivery port. We also have a connection port for our flash drive, two USBs. One of them is gonna be used for a mouse and an HDMI, which is what we're gonna use to actually view what we're doing. Because although we do have input with the front screen, you can't do all that much with this and you can't get the smart switch is, and that's really what matters here. Also, we're gonna need a flash drive. We need a 256 gigabyte flash drive. In this case, that's what the customer needs. I think they have about 150 gigabytes. So I got this nice one from SanDisk, it's USB-C. It's gonna be super easy to plug into their new device as well. Now, we're gonna also need a monitor. So I just have my old trusty test monitor lying around. So we're gonna use that. So let me go ahead and show you how we're gonna connect everything. First up, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to need to unlock the device first. So because we do have input with the actual screen, we can still type in the customer's pin, which I do have. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. And now with that unlocked, the screen does show up. However, to get it over here, we're gonna to need to plug everything in. So first up, we're gonna plug in our USB-C hub. And then we got that plugged in. And let me go ahead and find my HDMI cable down here which we can go ahead and plug into the actual USB-C hub. Give that a second to fire up. And I also have the mouse plugged in with the dongle on here as well, so we should be able to have full input with the actual device. So we should give it a second. And there we go. So now we're able to see the entire screen here on the actual phone, and it's gonna be super easy to interact with. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here to be able to get the data, um, we're gonna to wanna to move over to a section in settings, which is called Smart Switch. So if we scroll down, there's a section under, I believe it is Account and Backup. So if we go under here, we're gonna have an option for Smart Switch, and if we scroll down, we could back up to the cloud. The customer wanted it on a flash drive, so that's what we're doing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that right here. So Smart Switch gives you two options traditionally. One, if you have the other phone, you can do it either over a USB-C cable directly, or you can do it over Wi-Fi, whatever suits you, you know suits you. But for in this circumstance, we don't have the other device because this was sent in. So we're gonna use the external backup function. This is basically for an external storage device like this one. So we're gonna select that one. We'll go ahead and crack this guy open and plug this into the actual USB-C hub. I'm also going to plug in power right now as well, just because I am a little concerned that the phone possibly could die. We are at 79%, but this could take a while for this backup process. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we have power as well. And we do. So now we got a, um, on the actual backup screen, we are able to see that USB storage device. So we're gonna click that. And this is gonna ask us what we wanna back up. And depending on what you need, this may vary. Um, in this circumstance, we're gonna do everything. So we're gonna do this one. It says it's gonna be 99 gigabytes. It's gonna take about two hours and 42 minutes. So this is gonna take a little while. And then we're gonna scroll down and hit next. See, the only thing that we're not gonna be able to back up here is the WhatsApp data. We're not worried about that. I already asked the customer if they're gonna need that. We're good here, so we're gonna continue. Click next. And then it's gonna ask us if we wanna encrypt the data. The customer really didn't care. They just said to go ahead and just back everything up. So we're just gonna hit back up now and we're gonna let it back up over to that storage device. This is gonna take quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut to the end once this is done and I'll catch up with you guys at that point. And after about two and a half hours of waiting, everything has been backed up over to the flash drive. So now all we gotta do is go down over here and click next, hit done. And just like that, we can now disconnect the phone with the broken display 
and the USB flash drive that we can now give back to our customer that they can now plug this into their new phone, go ahead and load up smart switch and restore from this backup, making it super convenient. That's actually a really cool feature and I do appreciate Samsung adding some of these features that allow this to even happen. Because on the Flip 4, which was the previous model, it didn't have the ability to do display out. And something like this really shows that importance to have a true HDMI out through that USB-C port. And being able to move over to an external storage device also makes it really convenient as well. With all that said, I know I'm gonna get some questions on why I didn't just replace the screen, because that's another option to be able to access this data and then use like the smart switch feature on Samsung's phones um, to be able to get the data off of it. Well, that all had to do with price. See, replacing the screen on this particular model, if you look at pricing from Samsung, is around $320. And of course, I could probably get a screen for much cheaper and when it comes to labor, could be definitely a little bit cheaper. But the thing is, even at that cost, that's way more expensive than just getting everything backed up to a USB flash drive. Or if you did have the other phone nearby, you could do a smart switch feature using the secondary display over Wi-Fi, which for the home user is completely free. You know, in this case, they just had to pay for my labor, but that's it. And in this circumstance, that makes a lot more sense to me. And I do think it's really cool that Samsung has allowed us to be able to actually take care of an issue like this using an external display and not making it completely a brick if this thing doesn't work. So with that said, that's why I did that. And if you guys have any questions about the process or anything, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe for more content like this. And make sure to check out this video here. We went ahead and reviewed one of the best laptop coolers that I've ever seen.